welcome to the shop. We have uh, a few projects in the coming weeks which I'll proceed to show on the overhead camera. Um, one of which I want to get to today uh, and the rest I'll probably get to tomorrow but let's get to that content shall we? Alright, I built this little jeweler's maker's anvil uh, in 2010, right before I graduated welding school. Uh, and I haven't touched the project since then. Uh, it's come in handy for making all sorts of uh, flowers and different shapes. Uh, and this, this piece, uh, which will be reinforced uh, when I get around to, to working on this, which I think is going to happen today, is engineered to be able to make... Uh, square uh, wire out of round wire uh, from the copper electrical wires for making jewelry. Uh, this will be a fun project. Um, and let's see. Then there's a host of vintage knives that need to be restored uh, before they get sent off to New Mexico. So restored and sharpened. Um, and this one's really cool. Like you can see the uh, the original uh, smithing marks left in it from when it was forged. Like that's, that's really neat to me. Like I, I find that fascinating. But there's a, a few butcher's knives and some random knives that... Uh, I've been neglected for a lot of years that somebody in the family really wants and they need to be refurbished to be reused in a food situation and these uh, anvils are something that I'm gonna make a few of I have a, a length of railroad track out there uh, but this one is to provide proof of concept and a couple of other things uh, and it, it needs to be leveled uh, all the way across the top flat and I want to put a flat edge on this and this side so that I have 90 flat and 90 uh, mostly so I can get sharp edges uh, if I need rounded beveled edges I can uh, do use them with this or like this I used for uh, curling over flower petals and whatnot when I'm making uh, roses or decorative yard art. So those are the projects uh, that I have in the next couple of days. Let's get to the content, shall we? I totally forgot that I needed to set up that R22 uh, face mill. So let me pause this and get to that. Okay, first things first. Let's get to dumping out the contents of that packet getting our carbide inserts out. Now these came almost a month ago so they're the replacement inserts for this guy when I first ordered this part which never came. So in the meantime I'm going to use this janky little doohickey here. I'm going to get a magnetic tray down because who doesn't love a magnetic tray when they're trying to do intricate work like this? Um, and then I'm going to take all of these out. And I suppose I'll bring you back when that's done. All right, this is a right hand turning tool. So the inserts go in thusly stuck in there uh, and I probably should use some Loctite on this but in the interest of being short-sighted I don't think I will so get this all tensioned up nice and tight the way it should be Irk, and I suppose I'll bring you back when that's done. All right. Okay, the face mill is assembled. So next up, I suppose, is setting up the end mill. 
so that I can do the sides. And that's uh, 12 millimeter, which is here. I'm using the ER40 collet system, um, which is here. Goes in here. Uh, and there it is, of course, out of sight, out of mind. And put the collar, the retaining collar on there. Eventually it'll thread on there because, you know, when I'm trying to do this on camera, nothing can go right. Uh, and then I set the distance that I want the stick out on this thing. Um, once I get to a point where I can do that. There. So that's about where I want the stick out on my, uh, on my mill. mill on my end mill there that's the terminology I was looking for so I'm gonna tighten this up off camera and then maybe bring you back for some actual fun stuff I'm not sure if I have to adjust the height on my mill to accommodate this work piece or what the deal is but that'll that'll take me a minute to sort out uh, we'll see you then pretty fancy stuff so this uh, end mill and this face mill are the two tools that were required to accommodate this project thus far and there's a few more on my list of things I need but these are what I have and this is what I'll need to make do with so let me get set up on the mill and bring you back
Okay, not the prettiest of things, but deburring comes up next, so let's get this a little tighter in the vise. And I've mentioned this a few few times, but these uh. I make the handles for these, for these files. But I didn't have any handles for files, and I didn't have any money. So, but I had some aluminum. So, like you know, that'll work. Well, look at these corners. Before everybody's going, what the hell are you talking about? File handles. These uh, aluminum things are what I'm talking about that, that I built uh, for my files. So let's get this. Also get the corners. And get this. Also get corners. This. Also get corners. And I'll have to take grind to this and, and round it off again. But for a first try, that's such a thing. I'm pretty content with the way it turned out. Let's get the bird though. And you're not supposed to use a, a file like back and forth like this. You're supposed to go forward and forward. I use the way I want. So. Considering that most of these came from garage sales for a quarter piece, it's not going to hurt my feelings if one or two don't make it. I'll just be purposely something else. Ah, totally meant to do that. So now what I want to do, I've got these little two millimeter uh, end mills. And you're not supposed to use a, a file like back and forth like this. You're supposed to go forward and then forward, but I use it the way I want. So. Considering that most of these came from garage sales for a quarter piece, it's not going to hurt my feelings if one or two don't make it. I'll just be purposely something else. Ah, I'm totally meant to do that. So now what I want to do, uh, and I'm going to do that, probably, get this out, I'll probably do that, not on the front, because I want to make a bell here, like a little slant, slanted bell, um, but maybe along the back here, this is going to get rounded a little bit, it's a nice flat surface now, but this is going to get rounded a little bit, so that it applies some shapes, uh, but I'm thinking, dig out one of my scribes. So I'm thinking of putting like a, a slot to make a square wire. Probably. Probably right about here. Um, oh, and I make these little scribes too, just FYI. I always lose my damn scribes, so I was like, yeah, I should probably keep track of them at some point. Anyway, that's uh, that's next. Uh, and again, I'm most definitely going to have to break this up into parts. The next step involves using this super dinky two millimeter uh, end mill, which means that I need to take my mill up to its highest speed, which is 2,500 RPM. I've never done that. I would anticipate circuits being blown, so I'll do some preparations and hopefully this will go smoothly. Well, I ended up having to put the camera on a stool next to the mill because there was too much vibration. Hopefully this does the trick. And I don't blow like the circuit breaker 12 more times.
don't like them a lot. Well, that really was uh, a great deal more work than it needed to be to put in this little feature. And the whole goal with that is to be able to make square wire out of round wire. Uh, this is a jeweler's anvil and shaping anvil, after all. Um, and hopefully, I can. I could probably polish this up and make it beautiful, but it's mine, so why bother? Uh, in the meantime, these and the file handles and the scribes and a couple of other things I will be making on a reasonably regular basis, assuming there's an interest in somebody else besides me owning these things. Uh, thanks for coming along for the ride. I sure appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch this. Please take a moment and like and subscribe. I most certainly appreciate it. And have a wonderful day.